In today's video, we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop to create this space-themed background. This is how it's going to look once you are finished. Uh, it's pretty cool, pretty easy to make too, so let's get started. Head up to the File menu, make yourself a new document, and we're going to use a custom size today. The size of my document is going to be 1280 pixels width by 720 pixels height. Resolution needs to be 72 pixels per inch, and the color mode is going to be RGB color. You want to fill the background contents with the color black as well, so we start with an empty black canvas like so. Alrighty, first thing you want to do is add some stars into the sky. So we're going to do that by going up to the filter menu, selecting noise, and we're going to add in some noise. The amount of noise you want to put in is 400 pixels. We want to choose a Gaussian distribution, and we want to choose monochromatic, so we get rid of the color from this noise. And we'll click on OK. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this background layer. So we've got two layers exactly the same as one another. So just right click on the background layer and duplicate layer. It'll ask for a name, just click OK on that. And once it appears you'll see the background copy layer. Just hide it by pressing the little I icon there and that will make it invisible for now. We're going to come back and work with that background copy layer a little bit later on. Next thing we're just going to go back to the original background layer and select it. And we're going to apply a blur effect to uh, this noise. So we're going to go up to the filter, head down to blur, and I want you to select the Gaussian blur. The radius needs to be 0 0.5 pixels. That just adds a very slight blur to make these stars look a little bit realistic. And you can click on OK. Next thing we're going to do is just tone down how many stars we've got in our background here. And we're simply going to do that by pressing Control L to bring up our levels adjustment box. Okay, so Control L is the shortcut to bring this up. What we're going to do is look around the middle section here where we've got some values that we can type in. In the very first box, we can adjust the, the blacks or the shadows in this image. And I want you to change the black to 200. Okay, the next box across is the midtones. I want you to change that to 0 0.42. And we're going to leave the last box here, which is the highlights or the whites, as 255. So once you've got those three settings typed in, Click on OK, and you can see our starry background starting to come together. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on our background copy layer and make it visible again by pressing that little eye icon. Okay, that will just bring it back so we can see it again. We're going to make some bigger stars now that are going to stand out a little bit more than these little ones that we've just created. Okay, and the way we're going to do that is a very similar procedure. Let's head up to the filter menu, select blur and choose Gaussian Blur. The radius for this Gaussian Blur is going to be 2 pixels this time. Click OK. And then we're going to press Control L once again to adjust our levels. Once you press Control L, in the very first box here, the black, I want you to make 170. And we're going to leave the midtones as it is at 1. And then the whites, or the highlights over here, we want to change to about 172. And if you move the box to the side, you can see some slightly bigger stars starting to appear on your page. So you can click OK, and that's looking pretty good. Next thing we'll do is just blur these stars a little bit more again. So go to Filter and choose the Gaussian Blur option again. We're going to put a one pixel blur on these stars. And we're going to press Ctrl D to deselect uh, any stars that were selected just then. Last thing we'll do to these stars is put a bit of a glow around them. So we're going to go over to our background copy layer in our layers panel and just double click your mouse next to the word background copy in that empty space. And what that does is brings up your layer style panel. What I want you to do is just go down the bottom section, that second last option, select outer glow. Make sure it's checked and you've got it selected. I want you to change the blend mode to normal. The opacity should be 75% and the color should be pure white. The size of your uh, outer glow should be 10 pixels as well. Once you've got those settings all set, click on OK. You're not going to see this outer glow appear just yet, but when we apply a few more effects later on, you'll see it shine through. Um, the last thing we're going to do now for this background copy layer is we're going to change its blend mode from normal here. We're going to go down and select lighten. Okay, and what that does is basically brings back the stars on the layer underneath as well as shining through these slightly bigger stars. If I just toggle the visibility, you can see those bigger stars 
shining through just a little bit. Okay, and that's looking pretty cool. So what we can do now, since we're finished with those two layers for the time being, is merge them together. So the way we do that in our layers panel here is we need to select both layers. So hold down shift on your keyboard and just click on that bottom layer. So you've got both layers selected. Then you can right click on them and simply merge those layers together. And they join together to form one background layer once again. All right. Now what we're going to do is start to create some clouds, so a kind of cloudy effect on top of these stars. And the way we do that is we make a new layer to begin with, and we need to fill it in with the color black. So pop over to your color box over here and change it to black if it isn't already black. So you should have black and white there. And we're going to grab our paint bucket tool. Sometimes hides under the gradient tool, so you need to hold your mouse down on it and then select the paint bucket tool. And simply click once on your page and that will just color that layer in completely black. So it covers up all the stars. What we're going to do is we're going to put some clouds onto this layer. And the way we do that is simply go up to our filter menu, go to render, and we've got a clouds filter. When you click it, you'll get some black and white clouds on your page. Again, you need to make sure you've got black and white selected for your two colors over here if you want to get this black and white cloud effect. If you've got another color selected over here, then it's going to come out a completely different color. So make sure your foreground color is black and your background color is white. All right. From here, we're going to blend these clouds in with the background layer. So on layer one, while it's selected, change the blend mode here from normal. And I want you to select color dodge. Now that's going to make the clouds completely disappear. But don't worry, we will get them back in just a moment. What we need to do now is make another new layer that goes in between the background and in between layer one. So in the middle over here. So click on your background layer once and go down and make a new layer by hitting that button next to the trash can. And you'll see that layer two has appeared in the middle here between background and layer one. So make sure layer two is in the middle of your layers panel. Okay, from here we're going to go over to our little color box here. And for our foreground color, which is currently black, we're going to click on that and change it to a vibrant blue. Something like this blue here. And we'll click OK. Next up, we're going to grab our brush tool. Okay, you can press the letter B for the shortcut if you'd like. And we're going to go change the size of this brush to about 600 pixels. So at the top, hit that little drop-down box and change its size to 600. The hardness should be 0%. And the opacity over here, you've got a lever that can adjust how transparent this brush is. You want to make it 10%. Okay, just press Enter once you've got those settings in. The next thing we want to do before we start painting on our page is just change something in the brush preset panel. So you need to press F5. When you press F5, your brush settings appear. Just look down this list down the side here and make sure that none of these little options are checked except for smoothing. Leave smoothing checked. The rest of them should be unchecked. Okay, you can close that panel by pressing F5. I'll just click that button there to get rid of it. You're now ready to start painting the clouds onto your page. All right, so all you need to do is just start clicking on your page. Just little clicks, and you're starting to get that cloudy effect. If you want to make it a bit brighter in certain areas, click on that area a few times. You can even use the square brackets on your keyboard, so they're next to the letter P, to adjust the size of your brush. So if you want to make it a bit smaller, just get into those corners a little bit. Okay, you can adjust it like so. So I'm just going to undo that a bit. I don't want to have too much blue clouds, so maybe something like that will look pretty good. Make sure you've got a few brighter sections, a few darker sections, something like that. All right, after we've done that blue color, what we're going to do is we're going to pick another blue color, this time a bright aqua kind of color. So back over on the left-hand side in your toolbox, just adjust your colors a bit until you get a nice bright aqua. And I want you to go over some of those blue sections and add in some lighter blue this time. Okay, you can go over the bits you've already done to make them brighter. You can get into those kind of black gaps and add a little bit of light blue into them. Okay, just something like that. Probably not as much blue as before. Just a little bit like that looks good. All right, and what I'm going to do now to make this look a little bit more realistic, it looks a bit blotchy at the moment, I'm going to put a blur effect in. So I'm going to go up to the filter menu, head down to blur and put another Gaussian blur on. This time the radius, I'm going to make it 80 pixels, and that'll really smooth it out and start to make it look a bit more realistic. 
From here we're going to put a few more colours in. So head down to where you've got the aqua colour. This time we're going to head up to the pinky purpley kind of colours. Choose ourselves a bright, I guess more purple than pink. Click OK. And just scatter a bit of purple onto the page as well, into some of those gaps. Probably look good. Oops. Probably doesn't look very realistic. You can go over some of the blue sections if you want. It's not going to affect them too much. There's something like that. Looks kind of cool. Alright. And the last thing we might do is we're going to choose one last colour, which is going to be like a yellowy orangey colour, something like that. Make sure it's a nice bright one again. And just go over some of the brighter areas of your um of your design. It's just going to make the detail pop out a little bit more. Now if you go into these black sections, it doesn't look very realistic, so avoid going near them. Just hover over those brighter sections and add that yellowy orange colour. Okay, you can click it a few times. You can make your brush really small, even just go over some of those brighter stars. Make them stand out a little bit with a bit of a glow around them. Okay, so something like that looks pretty cool. Alright, so I won't play with that anymore. I think my original actually looked a bit better, so that one there. Okay, I did a much better job there, but you get the idea of how it's going to look when you are done. It's just a bit of, a, bit of trial and error. Maybe even another bit of a blur effect over the top of that layer would look alright as well. It's up to you. Okay, so when you are finished, make sure you go to File and Save As. And you just want to save it. I'll call it um, Space Effect. And you want to save it as a JPEG file. Click Save. For the image options that come up, make sure the quality is 10, 11 or 12. Okay, anything above 10 is good quality. Click OK. And you're all done.